Hey all, so this has been a long time coming, but we are doing the final Pokemon news segment. The one that I really should have gotten over to you all, what, maybe a few weeks to a month back, or at least in like multiple parts. So obviously we got the Pokemon Center, the video is up for that, you've seen me walking around there. Um, that ended up being my like big Pokemon uh, focus. We have the game coming out uh, on the 15th, so we haven't got long before that. So, before the game comes out, ignoring all the leaks that are going on, let us talk about the last bit of actual press releases that we got. So, let's start with Galarian Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd has an evolution! Uh, in, into Surfetched. Yes! The way they did this with um, basically hiding him at an angle and um, blurred uh, in the pixel sort of form on the page was brilliant. The moment I saw that, I was like, we've got a Farfetch'd evolution. People were like, no, 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 no way. And I was just like, we've, we've definitely got one. Um, the leak becomes a lance. Uh, he then also has a shield, which is also made technically from a from a leak. I think that's just a genius design. He looks so much slicker than cooler, um, but his type changes to fighting. I find that very interesting, uh, and I can't wait to see how it how it all goes. Um, he is an exclusive to Pokemon Sword, uh, so that is also pretty neat. Um, and he has the ability in this one called Steadfast, so that that, that should be pretty fun. Um, I will do the Pokedex entries like I have done so far, but we will do the after we talk about the other stuff. So moving on, we are going to have to talk about the next big reveal. So... We have this announcement, oh, there's going to be a 24-hour stream. Uh, and that was pretty neat uh, that there was going to be one. But it was it was dull, very little happened. They really went for imitating an actual um, experience for nature watchers where really like very little happens in the 12 hours of filming. But then you get the odd surprise and it's that surprise of two minutes or, or, or even just 30 seconds that makes it worth it and they put that in here and so many people were watching this in hope that something would happen and nothing really happened until the very end when they revealed that my little pony is crossing over with pokemon now honestly so galarian ponita uh is gonna be in 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 um in Pokemon, I think it, I think it's going to be the Shield. It's the Shield exclusive, yeah. Um, it looks like a My Little Pony. It looks smaller. It looks more cute. It's got the tiny unicorn horn already. Um, and it is going to have the abilities of either Runaway or its new one, Pastel Veil, which is unique to, um, to Galarian Ponyta. It looks adorable. I'm going to have to have this credit in my team, even though it's not what I would normally use. Um, I had been guessing that it's probably going to be a fairy type or a ghost type. It turns out it's a psychic type. That's that's interesting to me. Um, again, a single type. So, OK, I wouldn't I just have to wonder now what it's going to be like in this Rapidash form. Um, is there going to be something that more powerful or or could could it be locked down as just Ponita? Um, the leakers know. I don't, <laughs> and I'm not going to go find out because I don't really want to be spoiled at this at this point in time. Uh, so, following those two pretty impressive uh, events and announcements, we got our final final video for Pokemon Sword and Shield. The next video that we are going to get Pokemon Sword and Shield wise will be the launch trailer. I do not believe that we're getting any other trailer beforehand now. It's just going to be the launch trailer. We interrupt your programming to come at you with breaking news. The Pokemon Company and Nintendo have just announced that between November 15th 
and January 2020, there will be increased chance of Gigantamax butterfree in the wild area. Keep your eyes out. On December 6th to December 8th, the Galar Beginnings competition will open up. This is an online competition which you can access straight through the menu into Versus to Battle Stadium to the online competition. You will need to be signed up by December 5th. Registration opens on November 15th. There are new items and features in this game. Of course there are. You can now find mints. Yes, mints. Not mints, but mints. Uh, which will change the Pokemon's stat growth to match that of the nature of that mint. That's right. So your Pokemon can keep its normal nature and all of that information, but you can change the stat growth to match that of a different nature that you want it to have. This is great. This is a great way to improve your base stats. Special supplements no longer have a max number that you can use. So no longer are you trapped to your five or ten irons. You can keep pummeling irons until that base uh, until your base stat points are at their maximum. So this follows still with the standard base stat rules of, of the exact total number of points you are allowed. You can find XP candy. So this does not replace rare candy. Rare candy is still in the game. But XP candy will give your Pokemon additional XP. If they so happen to level up from that XP boost, they level up like normal. You will get this candy for max raid battles. Okay. Egg moves are confirmed. Good. Don't know why they wouldn't be there. You can now access, this is a great one. You can access your Pokemon boxes anywhere in the Galar region apart from when you are in a gym or on a mission. So make sure when you enter a gym or you start the mission that you have the Pokemon you want in your team at that point in time because you will not be able to change them. Auto save is going to be a feature in this game and it will default be on. You can go into your options, you can deactivate it, so don't you worry. And nicknames of Pokemon that have been traded to you. If the Pokemon that is traded to you did not have a nickname before it was sent to you, you can now change that nickname by finding a really nice guy in the Pokemon centers around the Galar region and he will let you nickname that Pokemon. That's all of the breaking news. Back to your regular schedule. So, they revealed more Gigantamax forms. And these are just... <laughs> it's just crazy. Okay, so we've got to talk about Pikachu. Pikachu has gone back to being... Like, when it Gigantamax is, we get original Pikachu. The Pikachu from the Game Boy days. The big, plump fella i love it i think this was a necessity uh gigantamax charizard is just something else his wings are now fiery beasts everything else is bursting i like it but i really feel that um i mean we know the pokemon cards for this is gonna like just sell like crazy but i feel that maybe we're at our end with with Charizard. We don't need Charizard to keep coming back with new things. It's time for something different, in my opinion. Um, we got Gigantamax Eevee, whose uh, main just gets really, really fluffy. Uh, well, That's going to be pretty cute and hilarious. And then, uh, God, I can't even... I The design is hilarious. It reminds me again of a moment in the anime... But we've got Gigantamax Meowth, and he's just long cat. Like, <laughs> way to bring back a crazy meme. I don't really know why that they're why they're doing this, but okay, fine. We will we will accept this critter. It's gonna be funny. Um, and finally, there was Gigantamax Butterfree, who it just just it's 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 Muffa, right? It it's a great Godzilla beast. <laughs> so, 
Uh, pretty awesome. Um, all right. So at this point, we've talked about what has been revealed outside of the press release information. I am going to start in a second to talk about the Pokedex entries and uh, the GMAX moves and how you will get the um, the Gigantamax uh, Gen 1 creatures. Um, if you don't want to know this information, if you want to stay in as much of the dark as possible, I highly recommend you leave now. Okay, have you gone? Yeah, you wouldn't even know that I've asked any of this if you've left. So let's get into it. Let's start with the Gigantamax stuff because we all know that's the interesting bits uh, for everybody before I do the Pokedex entries that I, I can see you all are loving. If you want me to, I will happily make one more video where I just redo all the Pokedex entries for all the Pokemon that we know of so far. So if you want that, comments below, let me know. Let's start talking about Gigantamax. Uh, let's start with Gigantamax Pikachu. And so it goes. The electricity generated in the sacs in its cheeks is stored in its tail. In battle, it will strike opponents with its tail and send the jolt of electricity through them as great as any lightning strike. What are you doing, dog? Hang on. With that disturbance, put aside the start again. Uh, the electricity generated in the sacks in its cheeks is stored in its tail. In battle, it will strike opponents with its tail and send a jolt of electricity through them as great as any lightning strike. Gigantamax Pikachu has become so powerful that it can produce enough electricity to rival a power plant. That's, that's pretty powerful. However, using this electricity to help power people's homes seems difficult as Pikachu can only remain Gigantamax for a short time. Well, they're all Gigantamaxes is a short time. Uh, electricity type attacks using, used by Gigantamax's Pikachu will change into G-Max Volt Switch which not only deals damage, but also paralyzes all opponents. So we've got another one of our field attacks. These are going to be so great in competitive Pokemon. To get Gigantamax Pikachu, you need to have Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu as a save file on your Switch. If you do not, you will not be able to get the guy. So uh, you, you make sure you want to do that. Uh, I've got Let's Go Eevee, so we're going to get Gigantamax Eevee. Um, I might search for somebody who has Let's Go Pikachu just so I can make the save file. Okay, Gigantamax Charizard. The flames inside its body become stronger, and now fire erupts from its mouth, its horns in addition to its tail. It seems that the strength of the flames increases with Gigantamax Charizard's roars. Charizard's flames have become enhanced with Gigantamax power and now form wings on its back. These wings are hotter than magma and Charizard can fire them off to scorch its opponents. Okay, that's a pretty awesome attack. <laughs> it's basically wing attack, uh, but fire typed and at range you don't need to get physical. Okay, um, the fire type attacks... Used by Gigantamax Charizard will be G-Max Wildfire. G-Max Wildfire doesn't just deal damage to the opponent when it's hit. But it will also continue to deal damage for four turns to any Pokemon that isn't a fire type. So, you get that initial blast of damage. And then you get ranged damage for four turns. Forcing people to switch out to protect themselves. This is great because you can use this in combination with a water type. Basically go smack down, cause the area of effect, switch out, get your water type in, destroy all their fire types with a type advantage or get all your ground types, of course. Um, nice. I can see some interesting ways of playing this. Um, its ability is Blaze. Gigantamax Eevee will come with the ability of either Runaway or Adaptability. 
Um, the fur around his neck has become extra fluffy and luxurious thanks to Gigantamax power. Any opponent caught in this fur becomes enamoured with Eevee and loses the will to fight. Gigantamaxing has caused Eevee to become more rambunctious than ever and it will attempt to play with any opponent. However, it often ends up crushing its opponents due to its massive size. Normal type attacks used by Gigantamax Eevee will be G-Max Cuddle. G-Max Cuddle doesn't only deal damage when it hits any opponent, but it, if that opponent is the opposite gender of Eevee, it will become infatuated. And as I said earlier, you will get this if you have a Let's Go Eevee save file. So make sure if you have Let's Go that you have those safe hours. If you do not have Let's Go and you are getting Pokemon Sword and Shield, find somebody that does. You only have to put that game in, play, save, and sort it. This is how you can get around things. Although I do actually have to say, the game is pretty good. It was quite a lot of fun to play. And now, Gigantamax Meowth. <laughs> I still can't get over its design. Um, it's going to come with the ability Pickup or Technician. Right. Gigantamaxing has caused Mio's body to stretch to outstanding lengths. Yeah, no. <laughs> the coin on his head has also become massive. The giant coin can emit a torrent of Gigantamax power, filling the surrounding area with a powerful oh. golden gleam. Thank you for the added sound effects, Remus. Meowth loves shiny objects, and when it sees skyscrapers lined with glass, it won't be able to resist the urge to sharpen its claws on them. This behaviour can cause considerable damage, such as wearing down the exterior walls and breaking windows. Normal type attacks uh, used by Gigantamax Meowth will become G-Max Gold Rush. G-Max Gold Rush deals damage to opponents and also scatters coins all over the area, giving trainers a considerable in-game cash bonus after the battle. So this is a great way of, of bolstering it. To get me out, all you have to do is connect to the internet, pick the mystery gift option, and you get Gigantamax Meowth. This will be valid from November 15th, so the release day, until January 15th. So this is an early adopter's gift. So hopefully you will get Pokemon for Christmas. And you will have time to do it. But don't delay. Do it as soon as you get the game. That way you don't miss out. The final Gigantamax that we're going to talk about. Is Gigantamax Butterfree. It will come with the ability Compound Eyes. And its most notable feature is its blinding wings, which have grown to gigantic proportions. The light of Gigantamax Butterfree's wings comes from its scales, which can inflict paralysis, poisoning, or sleep on its opponents. These scales are Butterfree's most effective weapons. Its vast wings can stir up a wind strong enough to lift a 10-ton truck. Wow. This wind also scatters poisonous scales around the area. So simply being near this Pokemon is very dangerous. Bug type attacks used by Gigantamax Butterfree will become G-Max Befuddle. This move doesn't only deal damage. It will scatter scales around the opponents and cause them to either become poisoned, paralyzed or fall asleep. So you get a random lucky effect. And again, it's a large field impact here. The possibility of sending uh, in, a, in a doubles battle or in a triples battle the entire team's Pokemon to sleep? What? That's just brilliant. I mean, <sighs> wow. That, that's, that's, yes. Um, there are no details on how we get G uh, Gigantamax Butterfree. My expectation here is this will be a raid Pokemon. So get into the wild area, get raiding. Hello, Remus. 
So, here we go. The last of the Pokemon Pokedex entries. We shall start with Surfetched. Um, so as I said, he's a fighting type. He is a wild duck Pokemon and he has, he has the ability Steadfast. So, so far, so good. Okay. <coughs> the far-fetched of the Gala region can evolve into Surfetched after experiencing many battles. They are calm and collected and they make a point of always battling fairly. Honour is a good thing. They are so noble in battle that they are often chosen as a motif for paintings. Of particular note is a painting famous in the Gala region that depicts a duel between Surfetched and Excav... Uh. <coughs> it depicts a duel between a Surfetched and an S. Cavalier. I think it's that. Yeah, S. Cavalier. In battle, Sir Fetch uses the sharp stalk of its leek as a lanch and the thick leaves as a shield. It maintains this leek over the span of many years and treasures it more than anything. When its leek finally withers, Sir Fetch will leave the battlefield and will tire from battling entirely. So, that's interesting. And I could see that as being like a potential for a third evolution. The leakless surfetched. Um, anyway. Meteor Assault is a new move introduced in these games that only surfetched can learn. Surfetched points its leak at the opponent and charges towards them at great speed. This move is devastatingly powerful. However... It appears that the move also puts a great strain on Surfetched. It will be unable to take an action after using this move. So you will lose a turn. But, you know, I bet, I bet there's going to be some move that you can combo up and then get rid of that problem. You know, like with Solar Beam, use Sunny Day, job done. Okay, over to Galarian Bonita. Um... It is the unique horn Pokemon. It is pretty unique. Abilities of Runaway or Pastel Veil. And the entry goes. Galeria and Ponita have been found in a certain forest of the Galar region since ancient times. It is said that they were exposed to the overflowing life energy of the forest over many generations. And therefore their appearance has become unique in this region. Galarian Ponitas can absorb the life energy of the surrounding atmosphere and store it in its mane. Its mane will become more colourful and even emit a sparkling glow if there is an abundance of the energy around. Galarian Ponita's ability Pastel Veil is a new ability introduced in these games. Of course, none of us have heard it before. This ability prevents the Pokemon and its allies from becoming poisoned. It can even cure poison status um, of its allies when it enters the battlefield. Now, what I don't believe is you can't switch out a poison Pokemon and bring out um, Galarian Penny. I don't think that will heal it up. I think this is only going to work again in Jaws. A lot of these abilities actually seem to be very much focused on, uh, on Jaw battles or triple battles. I wonder if they're going to become more of the focus i wonder if that's what we can expect in um in the tournaments maybe they're going to start pushing double battles more that'd be pretty cool could be interesting anyway that wraps up our pokemon news we have um a week and a half until the game is released and a week and a half until the pokemon center closes its doors in london i am going to go along on the 15th we kyle and i are going to be there early to check it out hopefully get in when the doors open at 10 get back here by 11 ish in time for pokemon to be delivered 
and then uh, us together are going to play through our respective copies of the game and just have a good time really it's going to be a great day i'm off work that day because it's my birthday uh that week so i'm a year older on the 13th of november i am off the 13th 14th and 15th so we are just gonna have a great fun time thank you all for watching and until next time keep it geeky